Okay, hello. Um, I am joined by Professor Barker today, and I'll be talking about the gamma function, uh, which is written with the capital Greek gamma, of course. Um, this notation is, um, I think, attributed to this guy, whose name I can't pronounce. You probably can recognise his name. And Euler, I believe, came up with the idea of the function itself. It's defined by the integral t to the x minus 1 e to the minus t dt. Um, it's really closely related to the factorial function. In fact, it's sort of an interpolation, if you like, a log convex um, interpolation of the factorial function. So it's written, uh, it's got a relation like this x minus 1 factorial. And Professor Sparkle will now tell you why that's the case. Okay, so we have uh, gamma x is this integral. Uh, so basically, we just integrate this by parts with this as u and this as dv. Uh, so we just get minus e to the minus t, t to the x minus 1 uh, from 0 to infinity, minus the integral of oh, over 0 to infinity, minus e to the minus t times du, so x minus 1, t to the x minus 2. So the minuses cancel, so we get a plus. Uh, so this thing, when t is infinity, we have the exponential function that grows faster than t to the x. So at infinity, this is just 0. And then when t is 0, this is also just 0 because we're multiplying by t. So, yeah, so I think this vanishes. 0, yeah. yeah. So it's just this integral. And we can take the x minus 1 out because it's a constant. And this integral is just the same as the gamma integral, but with x minus 1 replaced by x minus 2. So this is just gamma of x minus 1. Yeah. And you can notice that the factorial function follows exactly the well, almost exactly the same functional equation. Yeah. So all we need to do is just evaluate gamma of 1, for example. So gamma of 1 is just integral from 0 to infinity. Uh, and then when x is 1, this t to the 1 minus 1 just disappears. So we just have e to the minus t dt. And this is just an elementary integral, and it's just 1. Okay, so now that we know that gamma 1 is 1, we can get that gamma 2 is 1 gamma 1 in the functional equation, which is just 1. Uh, and similarly, gamma 3 is 2 gamma 2, which is 2. And the pattern just continues, so we have gamma n is n minus 1 factorial. Reflection formula, next. We won't prove it in this video, but uh, so I'll start with um, I'll writing down the reflection formula, which is this. Gamma 1 minus z, gamma z is equal to pi cosec pi z. And this is really useful because we can evaluate gamma half here, because we have 1 minus a half giving you half, just gamma half again. Gamma squared a half is equal to pi over sine pi over 2. Sine pi over 2 obviously is just 1, so we're left with gamma a half is the square root of pi, which is a really useful result because I can evaluate all the other half integer gammas this way as well. Gamma 3 halves say is equal to a half gamma a half from what Professor Sparkle just showed you. <laughs> so we have to vote pi on 2. I'm going to now show that um, we can in fact write this expression 2n factorial square root pi on top and for n, n factorial. I'm going to first of all write n plus a half as 2n plus 1 on 2. This is equal to 2n minus 1 on 2 factorial, um, which is equal to 2n minus 1 over 2 times 2n minus 3 on 2 times... Anyway, that goes up to 1. And the idea is we're going to sort of try to fill in the gaps here. How many 2s are there? That's a good question. Well, I think they're n of them. So we have 2 to the n on the bottom, basically. Oh, that should be a half, should it? So we're left with something over 2 to the n. Um, on top, we're going to be left with uh, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 3, up to, um, well, basically all the odd numbers up to 1. I'm going to fill in the even numbers now. So I'm going to insert 2n and 2n minus 2, etc. Uh, over here. And I think they're n of those as well. Um, so I'm going to write those on top. 2n, 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2, all the way up to 1, you get the idea. And on the bottom, we're going to be left with just the even numbers, which are this. 
is two up to two. Again, we can see how many twos are there. Well, there's going to be n of them because I added n of them to the top. Um, the top is obviously uh, just 2n factorial. I have n lots of twos here, which I can factor out of these brackets to be left with 2 to the power of 2n. Um, and this can be written as now n, n minus 1, etc. Which is equal to n factorial. And where's my square root of pi gone? Um, oh, here it is, yeah. So I should have written a square root of pi here. Um, so there's a square root of pi here. And a square root of pi here. And here. Okay, so we're going to do an example. So, let's take 0 to infinity of x to the 69 times e to the minus x dx. Um, so, if we compare this to the definition of gamma, um, the only thing that's different is n as 70. So, this is just gamma of 70, which is just 69 factorial. So, it's a pretty simple example. Um, right, so um, I'm going to now prove the Gaussian integral, which, if you do statistics, um, I hate you, but um, you would have seen this integral before and probably have memorized that it's this. So to do this, we can just use the substitution. Easy substitution of x squared is u. That just implies straight away that um, dx is du over 2 uh, root u, I believe. Yep. Um, so we immediately have that this equals, well, square infinity is infinity, squared 0, 0. So the limits don't change, and I have du over 2 root u. Uh, we also have our e to the minus u, because u is x squared. Um, and that's equal to a half times u to the minus 1 half, e to the minus u, du. Again, if you compare this to gamma definition, this is just gamma of a minus a half plus 1, which is a half, gamma, a half. And as we proved earlier, well, hand-wavingly proved, um, that is square root pi. So we have square root pi over 2, which is a Gaussian integral. So the generalization of this Gaussian integral is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x to the n dx. Um, so we basically do the same thing, but instead of substituting u equals x squared, we just substitute u equals x to the n, and then we get dx equals 1 over n u, 1 over n minus 1, yeah, du. Uh, so, yeah, just substitute this in, and we get 0 to infinity of uh, e to the minus u, 1 over n, uh, u to the 1 over n minus 1, du. Um, so we can just take the 1 over n out, constant, u to the 1 over n minus 1, e to the minus u, du. Uh, so this is just the same as the gamma integral, but with n replaced 1 over n. So it's just 1 over n gamma of 1 over n. And then using the functional equation, it's just gamma of 1 plus 1 over n. Or you could also write it as 1 over n Factorial. I'm going to show you one last example and then I think we will give you a challenge to do. Um, so I'm going to integrate now from minus infinity to infinity now of x to the 4 e to the minus 2x squared dx. Um, and I'm going to show that this is 3 square root pi all over 16 square root 2. Um, so, first of all, the limits are in minus infinity to infinity. Well, we're going to change that. Notice that this is an even function. So that means that the integral is just twice the integral over half the interval. Now I'm going to let u equal uh, 2x squared. How about that? Will that work? Well, probably. So I'm going to square root both sides on that to get you square root u. Square root u is square root 2x. Um, and therefore, I get that dx is equal to 1 over 2 root 2 root u. I, uh, du on top. So using that substitution we have that that's equal to the integral 2 0 to infinity of u squared over 4 um, and here we have e to the minus u du over 2 square root 2 of u so that's u to the minus a half du. This is the gamma integral again 2 minus a half being 3 halves. Um, so we have gamma of 5 halves. So 2 4 gives you a half, 
4 gives you a quarter, so 4 root 2, like that, times by all of this stuff. Gamma 5 halves is 3 halves times a half times square root pi, 1 on 4 square root of 2. Oh, that actually works, cool. Yeah, so that's the right answer. <laughs> uh, sorry, 16 square root 2. Okay, so this challenge is integral from 0 to infinity of w of x over x square root x dx uh, to show that this is 2 times the square root of 2 pi, uh, where w of x is the inverse of x e to the x. Yeah, so that concludes our um, first video on how to integrate properly. Goodbye.